Hello, and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. If you've seen my recent video on Big Sleep and Deep Days and maybe had a play with that, then uh, you will have been using OpenAI's Clip, along with Big Gan and Siren Networks. You might have been wondering, well, can I use this OpenAI Clip thing with Stargan 2? And the answer is yes. Y yes, you can, thanks to Peter Bailey's. There is a GitHub gist over here, which is a modified Stargan 2 projector with Clip. As you may be aware, the normal clip, you'd just point it at an image, a PNG or a JPEG or something, and say, hey, make, make it like this, make it like this. Whereas with this one, you can just give it some text, and uh, it, it, will, it will play with your network for you. Uh, so yeah, okay, so let's have a, a dive in and see what you need to get this running. You will, of course, need Stargan 2 ADA PyTorch. There's a little link up the top there if you want to know more about ADA PyTorch and getting data sets and training things and all that sort of stuff. But uh, in this video, I'll go through the very basics of setting it up. Now, if you don't want to do any training and just want to play with stuff, then there is also this website. As always, links down in the description. So awesome pre-trained Stargan 2 models, lots of models for you to download and play with their horses and anime and maps and faces and all sorts of things. Now, those are the old TensorFlow models, so you will need to convert them there with Python Legacy and you can pass it the source and then just point it to the TensorFlow pickle you've downloaded or trained and uh, then the destination and that will create a PyTorch pickle for you. If you want to download the old Stargan 2 ADA PyTorch, just git clone and uh, copy that and there you go. That, that will download everything for you. And uh, I, I tend to change directory into there as well so I can run all the commands. Now, as always, I am using Anaconda for my Python virtual environments. You can use Miniconda if you want to. Very, very easy to set up a new virtual environment. Conda create minus minus name, whatever name you want to give it and whatever version of Python you want to use. I am using Python 3.9 because why not? Okay, there we go. Let's let's activate my PyTorch environment. Done. Okay, now um, OpenAI's clip requires PyTorch 1.7.1. So you can pip install that. There we go. And uh, over on the PyTorch website, that will show you there that the current version is 1.8.0. Ooh, okay. But you can click on this little link here and uh, it will give you the instructions there for installing previous versions of PyTorch. Excellent, easy stuff. Right, okay, so that is PyTorch installed and there are a few more requirements there. Again, that's down in the description, so you can just copy and paste that, pip install, and there you go. You've got everything ready to run for Stylegan. Now, the clip will need a, uh, a few more bits and pieces. Now, of course, you will have copy and pasted that just to save it in. I've saved it in there into the uh, Stargan 2 ADA PyTorch directory as projector underscore clip dot py. Yes, I've, I've kept the same name, I've kept the same name. Makes it, makes it nice and easy then, doesn't it? So this will need a few other bits and pieces. So you will need to uh, pip install the OpenAI clip as well. So pip install that, that will take a few seconds. And uh, also pip install k-means PyTorch. There we go, we'll, we'll install that as well. Okay, great. So now you've got everything ready to run and you can run your Python projector. And you basically just point it at a network. So one of those one of those networks that you've downloaded and, and converted into the PyTorch one and the target text. Okay, so I've got one of my uh, one of my training runs in here. I've been training things. So uh, there's, there's some birds. Okay, so that's uh, yeah, there's some fakes there and a network snapshot. So we're just using that pickle there and uh, passing it in some text, a large sparrow sitting on a log. Now I'm using number of steps one, uh, by default is about a thousand, um, just because it finds it very, very quickly anyway. Um, if you put it up to a thousand, then you know it, it will go through and have a look for stuff, but uh, I've, I've found that it doesn't need to go that high to be honest. And um, yeah, yeah. So I will just uh, modify time slightly while this does its, uh, its bits and pieces. And there you go. So let's put it into this burb directory. So I was looking for a, uh, a large sparrow sitting on a log and there is the projected image of a, uh, a large sparrow sitting on a log. Fantastic. And uh, you get a little video as well. As you can see, I only did it for, for one step. So uh, it, it, it gets the right answer very, very quickly there. And uh, you get your MPZ as well for the, uh, if you want to save it and interpolate later. Excellent stuff. Okay, so that's a, a very basic thing. Very basic thing. I've also got uh, a blue t-shirt with text. I was uh, playing there with the clothes. So um, that's close. It's close. It, it, it couldn't do the text very well. And this uh, this one I did for the full thousand steps. 
So it gives you quite a long video, one minute and 39 seconds, and you can you can see it sort of creating the t-shirt and then slowly trying to figure out how to put text on it. But I, I haven't got any text uh, in my network. So um, yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, similar sort of thing with the fungi. So I was playing there with the fungi. And um, yes, my, my tropical island was an interesting one as well. So I have a quick look at the old landscapes because there aren't any tropical islands in there. It's all mountains. Uh, and that did quite well. I thought I thought that did quite well. And uh, quite a quite a reasonable projector there. So it sort of starts off with its usual mountains and stuff. And uh, slowly but surely turns into that tropical island. Okay, but um, I think things get really fun with people's faces. So if you've got one of the FFHQ models, or I've got loads of portraits as well, uh, then uh, I, I tried these as well. So uh, I've got a very happy female werewolf. Now that obviously isn't in the FFHQ um, data set at all. So let's have a look how that projector came out. There you go, there is a very happy female werewolf, sort of. We'll have a, we'll have a quick look at the movie. There you go. That grin though. <laughs> So it turns into a male werewolf and then sort of tries to tries to make it a bit more uh, a bit more female slowly but surely. So yes, that's uh, that, that's quite a good one. Um, <clears throat> this one I really enjoyed. A child that looks more like the back end of a bulldog. Yeah, how do you reckon that one did? How do you reckon that one did? Nice, nice, nice. That child definitely looks like the back end of a bulldog to me. Sort of starts off as a relatively human person. <laughs> And uh, slowly but surely transfers <laughs> the bulldog attributes to the face, <laughs> making the uh, the child more like the back end of a bulldog. Mmm, excellent. And uh, here's another one. Uh, a bearded child with glasses after a night out at the pub. There you go. Pretty, pretty rough, huh? <laughs> similar sort of starting place. Similar sort of starting place with that bloke, but then... Uh, yeah, it, it must have been a really, really, really rough night out. A really rough night out. And um, <clears throat> yes, I, I tried it on paintings as well. Paintings, it, it did quite well. So uh, obviously I haven't got any paintings that look like Elvis in there. So I said, yeah, make one that looks like Elvis. Show you the projector. There you go. So it starts off with a sort of relatively normal painting and, and ends up looking a little bit, a little bit like Elvis. I mean, sort of sort of <laughs> it, it, it gets close it gets close it's a whole one minute 39 so i, I won't subject you to that but uh, yeah it, it gets close to looking like elvis that's not bad and uh, then i gave a, another one here uh, a very happy elegant gentleman with a stupid haircut and uh, there is the elegant gentleman with a stupid haircut i think you will agree that haircut is uh, is quite is quite stupid and yet at the same time he looks quite elegant doesn't he it's, it's the, I think it's the smarmy grin that really does it. I think it's the smarmy grin that really does it. And uh, the final one here, just, just to show you here, is the uh, female vampire after a long night out at a nightclub. There's a, there's a theme in some of the things I'm picking here, isn't there? But there she is. There she is. Female vampire after uh, a very, very heavy night. A very heavy night. There you go. Queasy. It's making me queasy just looking at that, but yeah, yeah. There you go. So very, very easy to install. Incredible amounts of fun to play with. Um, yeah, there you go. Peter Bailey's. Give him a little follow on Twitter. P Bailey's on Twitter. Have a play with a projector clip yourself. Do all sorts of things with Starcan. And uh, let me know down in the description if you've uh, created any monstrosities. <laughs> Rodent out for now.